Some people are saying that moving the transmission, as in drive, reverse, that stuff, moving that to the screen, getting rid of the stalk was a really bad idea. The reason being that if the screen stops working, you can't drive your car, you're stuffed. Actually, that's not true. There is a way to drive your car, put it in park, put it in reverse, put it in drive without using a screen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And if you either have bought or you're considering buying a new Tesla Model 3 and the new Model Y when it comes out in, I don't know, maybe I don't know, 10, 11 months, something like that, then it's worth actually remembering what I'm about to share with you. That is that, yes, of course, it is true that you do have to use the touchscreen to put your car into drive, park, reverse, etc. However, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a, a good idea when the screen stops working. Now, I'm not saying it will. It may not ever stop working, but it's also possible that it could. So if it does, there is actually a button in the headliner. So if you look up the just above the mirror, that's where there is actually some controls that you can use to activate the drive, park, or reverse. Now, this is very similar to the Tesla Model S and the Model X. They have a similar ability as well. So between the two sun visors and right next to the rear view mirror, there is the buttons, actual manual buttons to override the transmission or not necessarily override it, just simply to use it. So in addition to that, we now know the performance specifications for the standard range and the long range Model 3, it's the exact power details. What are they? Well, the Model 3 standard variant obviously is rear wheel drive, it has a single motor, 194 kilowatts, that is 260 horsepower, and it has 250 pound feet of torque, that's 340 Newton meters. It'll do zero to 62 or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just over six seconds. It weighs exactly 1,760 kilograms. That's 3,880 pounds. However, the long range version, which I think is actually better value in most countries, is equipped with an additional motor. So you got the extra motor in the front. That means it has a total of 331 kilowatt. That's 443 horsepower and 412 pound feet of torque. That's 560 Newton meters. And that means it's actually the best value car in Australia right now uh, in terms of dollars per horsepower. Now, I know most people don't care about that, but that's just a little interesting thing that most people wouldn't realize. The Tesla long range is certainly not marketed as a performance car, but it can do zero to 62 miles an hour or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in around 4.4 seconds. So yeah, that's how you can get out of the issue if you can't turn on your screen, if it's bricked for some reason. Not that I think this is common, but it can happen. Now, this screen, speaking of that, it has been upgraded. It's a new model, has better brightness, higher nits, and it's slightly bigger. But the actual screen itself is not bigger, but it goes closer to the edges, meaning the bezels are thinner. It's now 15.4 inches. It was 15 inches before. It'd be hard pressed to be able to notice the difference, but it is there. People have said as well that they've seen a difference in the screen brightness. That's been an improvement. Now there's one other issue here that's worth mentioning. That is the capacitive buttons for indicators. Now there's no longer a stalk, so there's no indicators. Well, there is indicators, they're on the steering wheel. So there's a button on the left of the steering wheel, there's a right and a left button. And they're meant to be capacitive. People are saying that's terrible, terrible idea. Capacitive sucks. You don't know if you've pressed it. Good point. I thought the same thing, but then I saw from the videos, actually it's not really capacitive. It is, but when you press it, it does actually feel like you're physically pressing a button. So it's not really, I mean, technically it is capacitive, but the way it feels to a human is that it feels as though you're actually having to press a button. There is a little click there, so you can tell whether or not you have pressed it, which is probably a good thing considering all the criticism that the Volkswagen EVs got from their capacitive touch buttons. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.